Hello and welcome. I just finished my first year as a master's student. Oh yeah. During the last semester, I took an AI research course where we discussed autonomous driving. In that course, the professor asked me to implement a research paper from scratch. It was a fun project and I learned a lot from it. In this video, I will go over the paper and share with you some of the lessons that I learned. I will try to explain the concept as simply as possible so you don't need any AI background to understand this. So without further ado, let's dive in. The motivation behind this paper is very simple. In autonomous driving cars like Tesla or Waymo, we always have a device called a sensor. So a sensor is a device that helps the car to be aware of the objects on the road. A sensor can be a camera, a radar, but the most famous type of sensor is LiDAR. So LiDAR works by sending out light beam to the environment to collect back a bunch of data points. And these data points form something called a point cloud. Traditional autonomous driving rely on the LiDARs on the vehicle only. But this approach has a significant drawback. What if there's another vehicle or an obstacle that blocks the view of the LiDAR? Then the vehicle cannot see what's beyond that. And that's very dangerous. So the vehicle needs some support from the infrastructure on the road, such as the traffic light or the traffic sign. Each infrastructure can also has a LiDAR to collect data about the traffic on the road. So we need an algorithm to merge the point cloud from the infrastructure to the vehicle so that the vehicle has more vision on the road. VIPS has four main components. The first one is 3D object detection. In this stage, both the vehicle and the infrastructure will use the point cloud and detect 3D bounding boxes around on the objects. I use a pre-trained model called Point Pillars. This is a standard algorithm for 3D object detection in point clouds. The infrastructure will detect 3D bounding boxes in the point cloud and send that to the vehicle for processing. The second component is frame rectification. So once the vehicle send the detection to the vehicle, the vehicle need to rectify them. The reason being, the timestamp between the infrastructure and the vehicle detections usually don't match. So you can think of this as moving the infrastructure and the vehicle detections to the same time frame. The next phase is co-visible object graph matching. The basic idea is to map objects that appear in both the infrastructure detections and the vehicle detections. So we treat this as a graph problem. Each bounding box is a node and the distance between them is an edge. Finally, we have object alignment. So once we detect co-visible objects, we're gonna find a transformation matrix to transform the infrastructure point cloud to the vehicle view and then merge them together. This project taught me many valuable lessons and I believe this lesson will be valuable if you want to build any complex software project. The first lesson it use external API when necessary. With an API, you can ask another program or service to do something for you, like perform a task, give information, or send a message. When I started implementing this paper, I thought I had to do everything myself, from data collection to complex computations. But then I realized why not leveraging external APIs. They save me time and they've already been built and tested by other software engineers. For example, when I implemented point pillars for object detection, instead of training and building the model myself, I used an external API with a pre-trained model. This saved me many hours, and I can focus my attention on the core implementation. So if you're working on a software project that requires complex functionalities, Check out if there's any external API that can do the work for you. Lesson number two, always use virtual environments. I actually learned this lesson the hard way. When I first installed the API for object detection, I didn't know that the library has a dependency conflict with my existing NumPy version. It caused me a lot of frustration and it took me a long time to sort this out. If you are like me, you probably installed dependency and packages directly to your local machine. Trust me, it's a bad idea. It creates conflict 
and potentially break your system. Instead, use a virtual environment to keep your project dependency isolated. You can install multiple versions of the same package in your local machine. This step is crucial especially when you work on different projects that require multiple versions of the same package. One of the popular tools for managing virtual environments is Anaconda. I will make another video in the future explaining Anaconda in details, so surprise so that you don't miss it. This one is important. Struggling is a part of the process. So when I've worked on this project, there were a lot of times when I felt lost and confused and want to give up. But here's the thing. Struggling is normal. It's how you learn and grow. When you are implementing something complex, you will hit roadblocks. Instead of getting frustrated, embrace the challenge. Take breaks, search for answers, and don't be afraid to ask for help. You will find that the most challenging moments lead to the greatest breakthroughs. And finally, learn to debug your code. I believe debugging is the most important skill for a software developer. When you work on something complex, most of the time your code will fail and it's perfectly okay. This is when you practice your researching and problem solving skill. Many beginners make the mistake of being panicked when they see an error message. I used to be like that too, but panicking won't solve the problem. The error message will not go away. Instead, see this as a learning opportunity Learn how to trace the bug using the IDE debugger or print statements. Learn how to do research on Google and Stack Overflow. So the more bugs you can fix, the more valuable and capable you are as a software engineer. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. That support the channel a lot. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.